Hey, hey, welcome to June 29, 2022. We're only going to get one, so we're going to make it a good one. Uh, matter of fact, Steve, I have heard that it's a really good day for one man who just sold a mule. Did well, you hear about that big sale? Yeah, I saw it at um, uh, one person sent it to me, and it's $52,000. Fifty two thousand dollars. That's nothing to that's nothing to laugh at. I'll tell you what I'd do with fifty two thousand dollars. I'd uh, I'd put in a, a water slide in my house. What? <laughs> I have three little boys who would love that. And we used to we used to go buy a plastic tarp and run a water hose on it and and run and hit it and slide. You know, and then all of a sudden they started having slip and slides, and we thought we. We thought we had, well, we did have an original, then they made it up, you know, how about that? I guess you don't need $52,000 for a homemade slip and slide. No, we made our own fun, our own toys back when we were kids. We climbed in trees and made tree forts and threw dirt clods at each other and built our own bikes and uh, did things that kind of helped you when you grow up, you know. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, they can't go five minutes now without asking for screen time. And if you say maybe this afternoon, then they follow you around the whole day thinking that maybe if they follow you, it'll become this afternoon a lot more quickly. So <laughs> I ain't going to let no screen raise my kids. That's for there sure. There you go. That's right. That's for sure. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? You can't let a screen raise your animal either. You can't just put a screen in front of your mule or donkey and say, hey, watch this. You got to get out there. You got to make it happen. So we are here yeah. to make it happen. And even though you're looking at a screen right now, it's real people right here trying yeah. to really help you in real ways. And so that's what we're all about. Uh, my name is D. My name is Steve. My name is Dave. And this is Steve, and every week we get together to talk mules and donkeys. Today is pre-recorded. Why? Because I am in California with my family. Every year we try to get to California once or twice to visit uh, one of my old bosses. For those who don't know, I was in ministry. I was actually a pastor uh, for about eight years. And uh, one of my bosses became one of my best friends, and he lives in California ministering there uh, to a church that um, is in the Artesia Cerritos area. And we go out and we spend about a week with him every single year. So that's where I am right now. But that doesn't mean we can't talk mules and donkeys. So, uh, Steve, I want to say hello to all of our friends from across the nation. I want to say to our, hi to our friends in New York. Hi to our friends in Connecticut. You know, Cowboy Ken, Ron in Virginia, um, Eileen, Yolanda. We've got Myra. Uh, we've got Jackie. Um, we've got Kiki. Uh, folks all over uh, California, in Hawaii, New Mexico, uh, Illinois, um, up north of the border in Canada. We've got friends across the oceans in Australia taking us international. So many friends from all across the world. We get to hang out with them. It is so much fun. And uh, Steve, isn't it pretty amazing how we've gone international here with this mule and donkey thing and uh, all it took was just a Facebook Live. All it took was a YouTube video. Yeah, it's amazing, Dave. You know, the, you talk to people all over the world. And every time I, I turn around, I, I get little texts and emails and even phone calls saying, hey, you changed my whole way of life. I had no idea of what was going on. Just like even today, a lady had my saddle and she just loved it and stuff. She says, that saddle don't need a britching. Or a breast collar. It just stays right into place. I said, well, ma'am, I, I, I hate to, to tell you that, and I appreciate the pat on the back, but you need to take a look at some of your pictures. That saddle is sitting on top of that scapula. And uh, it, you're right. It may not move much more, but your, your mule is getting beat to death uh, by my saddle. And so she said, oh, I see it. I didn't, you know, I wasn't paying attention. You know, but anyway, there we are, folks. You know, I... Even with my saddles, people can make mistakes. I have videos that go with it, right, Dave? I mean, it's step by step. I've got like 400 videos out there, YouTube, that focuses on things. But what Dave put together there, the mastering, the saddle fit, oh, man. Uh, you guys should go, go and say it's free. I dropped the F on, Dave. Free. So you can go, uh, go there and watch it and get your questions answered. It's really important. And listen, you know, good for the guy selling his uh, his uh, his meal uh, at fifty two thousand. 
I mean, it's a lot of work to train one, you're right, and he did all kinds of stuff with this mule. Uh, listen, folks, when, when they can stand on top of the saddle and pop a whip and jump off, get off both sides, things like this, I mean, that's nice. It shows that the mule is gentle, but it's still a mule. And I guarantee you, the first time that a that something comes up and spooks that mule, flight and fright is going to kick in. So, does the mule back up? Nice. Does the mule side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters? Uh, nice and easy, okay? You gotta think about that stuff, folks. You know, I was riding D Dave uh, down at the Andrada Ranch last year. Yeah. A really great mule. She's 24 years old and solid mule. I'm just riding along. Now, we've punched cows. We have had our dogs with us, moving them. You know, they see dogs all the time. Calves, rattlesnakes, uh, mountain lion, uh, you know, deer, all kinds of stuff. All the time. They see that stuff, Dave. And they're well-trained. They know what side passing is. They know how to roping and jumping in trailers and all that stuff. Oh, they know that. But here it is. I'm riding along, and all of a sudden, my border collie puppy comes out from the bushes just about 10 foot from me. And she's walking along, ears just flopping, everything's fine. And all of a sudden, kaboom, she blew up, went to bucking. The old fat man stayed on her, okay? But here, here's the deal, folks. I'm telling you. Just because you see the dog and pony shows, dog and pony shows, stand up on them, jump off each side, roll and do all this stuff, that's all well and good. That's all well and good. It's nice that they are able to do that and they're young enough to do that. But where was the saddle setting on top of the scapula? And some of my clients, Dave, was watching this and seen it. You know, uh, the trainer is, oh, hey, man, he's great. I, I, know him, I know him very good, very well. He's an excellent trainer. But listen, folks, saddles need to be placed in the correct places. And they need to be britches and breast collars on them. If you don't have a britch and a breast collar on them, you're a horse trainer, period. Horse trainer. You may be riding a mule, but you're not treating that mule correctly. And so there you go, Dave. I just kind of jumped on a little bandwagon there. Hey, uh, no, hey. More power to him. I mean, this is the I used to ride show. mules for two years. And sell them for thirty five hundred dollars. Two years, all right. Now, how many of you work for two years and sell for thirty five hundred bucks and buy the meal and feed him and vet him? You know, yes. You know, there we go. Okay, folks, we've got to remember on mules they're V shaped in their shoulders. Horses are A shaped in their shoulders. Mules carry their weight down low, and their hourglass belly toward the shoulder. So notice how this belly comes around and comes toward the shoulder. So the, the back cinch is going to be longer than the front cinch because of the way the belly is. So you'll take a rope and you'll throw it across and then you'll bring it up. You want it to be right where the scapula is. You want to have about a whole hand from the scapula to, the, to your rope. And that's roughly going to be about where your D-ring is going to be for your cinch. And then you take your knot and you measure it off right to here. Then once you do that, you take your measuring tape. And you put it from here. And you measure the length of that. And it comes across as 78 inches. All right. So now you take that 78 inches and you cut it in half. And that becomes 39, okay? So you take, then you take that 39 and you take four inches off of each side, okay? So then that makes it 31, 32. So it's gonna be a 32 inch cinch would be what I would use on the front of the mule, okay? You could use up to a 34, but here's the deal. From where your D-ring is to where your D-ring is down here, it doesn't matter how close it is here. You just don't want to have it clear back underneath here, and you don't want to have it up here close to where you can't cinch it back up. So if your cinches are, what, 12, 16 inches away, Randy, it'd be good. That'd be fine if I was going to do an average, 12 to 16 inches. So we do the same thing. We'll take this tape, and we'll throw along the back part. Now, a, a lot of people don't have a, a nice uh, tape that, uh, that's these cloth tapes. 
but they're nice if you can use them. So you bring this up and you, you're you dealing with it right around, right around 90 inches. Now notice here, as the belly comes up, right where the belly flattens off and then comes back up again, that's where you want that rear cinch to be. That's the sweet spot. See, this comes around and then it flattens, this comes in, flattens out right here, then goes back up. That's the sweet spot where you want that rear cinch. So you take and you put your, your uh, measuring stick right there, and then you measure this off, it's 92 inches. So you take 92 inches, and you do half of that, that's gonna be 46. 46, and then take four inches off of each side. 38. So you run about 38. So that's roughly gonna be this mule, you could, you could do, you could do a 32 and a 34 on him, it'd be fine. Or you could do a 38 and a 40 in the back and you'd be fine. So that's how you can measure for a cinch. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is cinches. I got a message in from Chris and he said that he went ahead and he looked at the cinch video that we have for measuring cinches. He says, I'm looking at trying your front and rear cinches. I have a mule with pretty round hay belly. She's hard to size for. Looking for some tips or advice on sizing before I order them. I watched your video on sizing and according to it, shows a very large size 38 inch for the front. Can this be right? What would you say to Chris, Steve? Well, if you measured it right, it's never been impossible. There are some mules that, yes, a 38 would be it. And that would mean it would take a 42 in the back. Uh, but I talked to Chris and saw his mules and we got him squared away. A 36 would work good for him. Um, and so uh, uh, he went ahead and, and put his order in and we'll rock and roll from there. So why do we want to go with two cinches? Why is that important? A lot of folks say, I'm just fine with one cinch. I don't need the two cinches. Well, then they better ride a horse then. And even then they're doing it incorrectly because here's the thing with two cinches, folks. The back cinch helps keep the, the saddle from cantilevering. Where do you see white marks on your equine? Right in behind the shoulder. Why is that? Because we over tighten the front cinch and we either don't tighten or don't have or have too loose the back cinch. So now here's the scapula area right here where my sleeve is. And right here is a working area where the front of the bar is on the saddle. And the white, white marks are right there on the mule's back because, or the horse's back, because we cantilevering and we're pushing on that. Pushing, pushing, pushing. So take the back of your saddle, folks. And, and don't even try to put cinches on and put your hand right in behind the pummel and push down on it. The back of the saddle will come up, okay? With my saddles, you push the saddle down right at the seat. The front of the saddle comes up. Why? Because you want it up off of that area. Very good. Next question. This one came in from Julie. She says, my husband purchased a mule about two months ago. It's a Henny gelded about three years old. Drives quiet nicely, but could use some ground manners. Don't we all need a little bit of ground manners? Have had horses, but never a mule. I have been watching lots of the training videos, and I'm wondering, is there any difference in training a Henny because of his more horse-like features? Thank you for any information or resources that you can give me on this subject. We get a lot of questions about Hennies, Steve. Um, what is a Henny, and then is there any difference in how you're going to train a Henny versus a standard? Okay, so a Henny, the mother is the donkey, and the father is the horse, where with the standard mule, the father is the donkey and the mother is the horse. There's no difference. You can put two mules together, two of them together and say one of them's a henny and people will say, oh, he's got smaller ears, smaller head. No, 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 has nothing to do with it. Still the same bone structure because we still have the donkey involved. So there's no difference with ears, head, body, the way it's built. No difference. The only way you can tell it is a henny is when you do a DNA test. Only way. Ain't no other way. You may, you may think and see, but it's not, folks. I've had, literally, I've had a clinic, Dave, where we've had a henny and we've had a mule. And I would say to the folks, which one is the henny? And it was inevitable. 
the horse, the mule with the smaller head and the smaller ears, everybody thought was a henny. Nope, it was the mule. So that's the only way you could tell. So training wise, I train donkeys, horses, mules, all using the same way of training. Next question that comes in, this one's from Jack. Jack says, I just purchased my first mule from Jake Clark's Mule Days. He's a small John mule, about 14 one hands, and weighs about 900 pounds from what the info was on the auction site. He'll be arriving to my home here in North, Northern California today. I'm looking for recommendations for a feed brand. You mentioned Lake and Light in your website for feed. I like the idea, but I don't see that feed here locally. Do you have any recommendations for other feed brands? Also, I'm checking with the previous owner to see what she was feeding him. I don't want to switch him over to pellets fully right away. Would rather gradually get him on the pellet feed over the next two weeks if possible. Looking for recommendations. That's his first question. You want to go ahead and talk about that, Steve? Yeah, they can, you know, the the uh, uh, Lake and Milling uh, has... That was the one that we, where we started that particular ingredients and line of feed with, with Lake and Light. When I was over teaching at, at uh, Pierce College in L.A., we had Star Milling made up the feed for me the same way and supplied it there. So you can contact Star Milling in California and find out where the feed store is that has it. And then take the ingredients off the article Mules can't stand prosperity, and you'll be able to, to, to find the same feed. The second question he's got here, I'm going to need some tack and saddle. I purchased this mule mainly for my two sons to ride. They're eight and six. I would like to find a saddle that they can fit into, and I'm not sure if you have anything or could recommend a right size fitting saddle for this little mule. Look forward to chatting with you. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing, folks. It's hard enough for an adult to stay balanced in the saddle, let alone a kid. And they actually can do better in the long run. I tell you what I did with my kids is I literally pulled the stirrups off of them because the problem was the kids getting hung up in the stirrups and being dragged. That was, that's always been a fear of mine is to be dragged. That's one of the reasons I use taps, but I had my kids, ride without stirrups their first uh, year or so of riding until they got a good seat. They got good balance. They only rode in the corral or the arenas. And when they started getting good at it, then I started putting them in stirrups. Do you want to talk about um, the uh, bucking rolls? Well, bucking rolls are a great addition to your saddle. And what those are, you can go online and you can see them or download. Dave may have some, some pictures of them. But basically, they're two leather bumps about the size of a, a, a nice uh, 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 grapefruit. And they go on each side back and behind the pummel. And they do help make the seat smaller. And they do help keep the, keep the people in the seat better. Buck and Rose is a pretty nice, just like it says, Pretty nice way to kind of get snug in the saddle, especially the first few rides. Uh, that's the problem with kids, folks. You, you don't want to buy pony saddles and throw on there and think you'll be all right. Remember, your, your horse saddles put pressure in different places than, your, than my saddle does. That's what it does. Now, I don't know if all these saddles that they call mule saddles. I, I don't know where they are with those, but I can see the result. And the result is not only a sore mule, but a cripple mule in, in so many ways. Well, you can't tell. So we, we are very adamant. We do not sell mule saddles at muleranch.com. We sell Steve Edwards saddles. And why do we make that distinction? Because anyone can throw any type of title they want on top of any product they've got. They can say whatever they want. The only way to know if a saddle has been designed to fit the bone structure of the mule, mind you, it's not the muscle, and the muscle is what you're actually getting when you get custom saddle measurements. It's depending on when they measure it. If they measure it in the winter, they're going to be fatter. If they measure it in the summer, they're going to be thinner. And they can drop weight when they're going through a multi-day ride. They can drop a lot of poundage. So the only way you know 
if the saddle has been designed to fit the bone structure of the animal is to strip everything off and get down to the bars and examine the bars. That's why on all <clears throat> on YouTube and on lots of our videos, you know, on our saddle products on the website, we show, we educate what we mean by the bars and how they're meant to be designed. So if you need more information on that, just give Steve a call 602-999-6853 and he'll take care of you. But the only way to know if it's a Steve Edwards saddle designed for the bone structure is to buy a Steve Edwards saddle or look at the one you've got, strip it down, pull everything off, Look at that tree, look at the bars, and then make the determination. Of course, then you got to put it back together, and that's going to be a whole nother thing. Next question here we got is from Nancy. It says, I have an 18-year-old mule, and I am, and it's a pleasure riding him. What bit do I need? Now that's that's a pretty simple question, Steve, but it's a it's a little bit of a, I wouldn't say complicated, but a an answer that involves, well, several steps. Why don't you tell us? Well, now, step number one, folks, we want to make sure that your teeth are floated. Number one, we want to make sure that's done. When the teeth are floated and they're correct, then we can start sliding a bit in their mouth. Now, if they can side pass, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, back up nice and light, and stop nice and light, all pretty nice with, with one hand, then we can look at using my finish bit, my trail rider bit. If we have to use two hands to all of our guiding with all of our guiding. And we have to do a lot more pulling on them. Then we probably should look at my mule riders, Martingale. So do I want to go straight into a bit when I get my animal, just take it home. It's been trained. I've seen people ride them. Just get that bit you were talking about, get the mule riders, Mark Martingale or the finished bit and just go at it. Or is there anything I want to do first? Well, as with always, Dave, you know, we look at ground communication, you know, using that come along rope, that's, that should be used the whole life for your mule. Six months builds a foundation, but I would use the come along hitch and uh, I would have the boys uh, get a hold of that come along hitch and I would have the boys learn how to lead them because if you can't lead them on the ground, folks, you can't ride them. Get that in your mind. That's how difficult it is when it comes to leading a mule. Well, I'm leading him from A to B. Yeah, but he's staring all over the place. He's pushing against you. He's in your space. He's too far back. You're having a pull on him. A lot of different things. Yes, you're leading him from A to Z, but he's not doing it on your terms. He's doing it on his terms. You're the herd leader. Next question that we got comes in from Christine says, I've watched your videos on how to get a mule to pick up their feet, but I have not been successful. And Christine, I just want to say you're not alone. Um, matter of fact, I've witnessed Steve be unsuccessful getting an animal to pick up the feet. So we're here to help you. You're in good company. I'm also working on getting her to use a saddle blanket, blanket and a saddle. I feel like I take one step forward and two steps back. It's odd because her previous owner claims to have gone trail riding with her. Thank you for the videos. They've been so helpful already. What kind of encouragement do we want to give to Christine, Steve? You know, Christine, we've, we've got several videos out. One of me picking up the back foot and I'm starting to do it at first. I've just got him tied to the hitching post like everybody else. And you'll see the end result. I end up using the come along hitch and, and I end up getting pretty tough on this mule, but I'm able to do it. I'm able to do whatever I need to do. And I'm even doing some demonstrating with the mule. So uh, you just have, to, it's your timing, Christine, or your nephew or your son, whoever it is going to be riding a mule. It's always your timing, folks. It's your timing, your abilities to do that. So what you're going to see in the video here of Steve uh, working with the mule to pick up the rear foot. If you haven't seen it before, uh, this is a great opportunity to look at how to address an animal that does not want to give you the rear foot and you can't just rush into it. And so you'll see the first couple times that Steve tries to get the foot, animal doesn't want to let him have it. So then Steve goes and gets the come along rope. So Christine, if you don't have the come along rope, 
You need to get yourself the come along rope, but don't just get the come along rope, get the ground foundation starting kit. That's going to give you the come along rope and the problem mule video, which is an instructional video that shows you an owner going from ain't done nothing all the way to getting and working out a lot of problems. Now, here's the thing. You're also going to get a rope halter with that kit. And that rope halter is only for a few specific things. Of course, you never want to tie up with the come along rope. So you can use the rope halter if you need to tie to the hitching rail or something like that. Or if you want to do some sur single training, you can use the rope halter for that. It comes as an additional tool for when necessary. But the come along rope is going to be exactly what you need to communicate right in the moment that the animal doesn't want to listen. And that's the timing that Steve's talking about. So be sure to get the come along rope if you don't have it, because that's going to give you uh, the tool that you need and the leverage that you need to get the results that you want. Hand on the hip, hand on the foot. I bring it forward. We have a donkey bone structure. I'm uncocking the hip so that the mule is relaxed. Once I pull it forward, it's uncocked, it's relaxed. I come straight forward and I go over to the left. When I do that, I look at my foot, hold it right here a second. Uncock the hip. Better that time. Nope, nope, gonna. It's uncomfortable. Straight back and over to the. Straight back over to the left. Now. I don't know if the phone is making the problem or not, but let's just try that. Good girl. Okay, school hard knocks. Everybody kind of get yourself standing up to where, in case something happens, we don't want the mule to go over top of you. Put yourself in kind of a safe place, which is not really a place, but <laughs> it'll be better than nothing. Keep your head up. One of the things that we have is most farriers and most folks don't understand uncocking the hip. And so the mule gets to where he gets kind of on the fight. And he's just uncomfortable. So, uh, so we need to show him that he's really going to be uncomfortable if he decides to be incorrect. Okay, I've got a button right here. When I touch that button, I expect that mule to move his foot like that. Now I touch the button and I tap. Better, that time we got more movement out of the foot. He's got to understand that when I push the scapula, that means the whip is coming and he needs to pick his foot up. Touch him here. Better, good for you. Okay, now we take the back leg. We come around and we tap. Good girl, good for you. Remember our foundational training was when I put the cumo hitch on you, 
you don't move. All right. Now here. Good for you. Good for you. Just don't touch my nose, Steve. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Okay. I love that come along hitch. Yeah. Do y'all see? Y'all see how that come along hitch makes a difference? My foundational training out here said, you move your feet, you're going to be made uncomfortable. What's the mule saying? Don't touch my nose. You touch my nose, I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'd rather not move my feet than have my nose poked on. All right? Now that's just a little bit. And we'll move on to where you know we can we get more as we go but i want you to understand that when you're going to train you're going to vet you're going to shoe what fixes and helps you out is this come along hitch because of their nose it's very sensitive all right yeah guy come over and tried a, a little bay horse i got over here uh, just super gentle he backed into that Choya cactus and just had him loaded in Choya and that old horse just kind of looked back like, what's next? No big deal. Give me a horse like that or a mule like that. Whoa. Hey, we're not doing that. You do that and you're going to pay the price. Yeah. All right. And they're going to try you. That's okay. He's just trying me, yeah. He said, I know you're going to pick the feet up, but I'm going to say, well, but just keep your feet still. And if you move your feet, don't think, folks, he's trained now. No, no, no. Later on, it's coming back again. You have a foundation. It is not permanent. There's going to be times that they're going to say, you're going to say, well, I bought a trained mule. Now he's doing ABC. Well, you know. It's not a permanent thing, and it could even be in something you done inadvertently, all right? Hand on the hip, and the feet should shift like that. And here, good. She gets her, her right rear foot in a comfortable place, relaxes. Come straight back. I'm waiting for you. Okay, that's what I was looking for. There we go. Why well, I never remember to bring my gloves with me, but we'll get it. Oh, it's a loose tail there, sweetheart. Yeah. Let's go back and do it again. Okay. There we go. Relax. Okay, straight back. Over to the left. Good for you. Good for you. Okay, now this foot is going this way. Coming to the inside. This is supposed to point to the center of the foot. And the foot is going over here. Now you cannot... You cannot fix that problem with trimming, folks. That's hoof wall moving. And you've got to have a shoe on there that's corrective. You want to, you want to do that? Go ahead. Give that a try. Oh, yeah. Different idea. You've got to have a shoe on there to correct this. That's what you got to do. And if you don't, you'll be trimming to the cows come home. And yeah, you might get it in a while. But if you corrective shoe that thing, and it'll take about a year to get this mule straight, but you'll have it. Got a question here from R&R. &R, says, can I purchase the beta bridle separate from the reins? 
And also, can the silver concho be removed from the bridle, or is it stitched or glued in place? We have a lot of – now, this one I'm bringing up because I don't know the answer, Steve. I'm not a mule person. I'm not a donkey person. I'm not an equine person. And a lot of times I've heard Steve answer something uh, such as, hey, on the mule rider's martingale, can we separate the bit from the bridle? Well, no. I know that because they were designed to work in harmony with one another, and if you take one, you ruin both. So – when it comes to the beta bridle and reins, Steve, are those meant to go together? Or if someone were to have the set, would they be able to take them apart? Yeah, they can take them apart if they want. They're easy to take apart. And my my uh, conchos, uh, rosettes on each side are easy to take off. Uh, uh, so I, if you got your own rosettes that you want to put on there, that's fine. Uh, but just that mine are unique uh, about them. So... It's my wife's mule, matter of fact, but uh, you can, but you, I, I can't give you, I can only sell it at one price. That's with the reins, bridle, and no bit, uh, just as you see it there. But you can take it apart any way you want it. Awesome. Very good. Next question comes in from Marsha. Says, what do you think, Mr. Steve Edwards, about, I added that part. She didn't say that. I added that. What do you think, Mr. Steve Edwards, about the treeless or the soft saddles? She's coming to us watching one of our replays on YouTube uh, from uh, Virginia. Uh, says it rained last night, and it's just beautiful and clear today. What do you think about the treeless or the soft saddle? Now, I don't know what those are first. Can you explain what those are and then let us know what you think? Well, basically, the treeless, the only place that really sets on the mule's back is the pummel and the cantle. And the rest of the saddle moves like this. Folks, the purpose of a saddle is to evenly distribute your weight so that the weight is evenly distributed across the loin of the animal. When you only have uh, a place to sit in the front and a place to sit in the back, the spine is going to pay for it in the middle. It does not work, folks, especially for you trail riders. Uh, the the uh, that those saddles do not keep the mule from being hurt in the back. You need to have solid wood uh, bars so that it will evenly distribute the weight and keep them from hurting themselves. And yes, they will hurt themselves. Uh, Watch, start watching your meal. If you've been doing it for a while, you'll probably see him tripping. Very good. Thank you so much for the question, Marsha. Next question comes in from Sam. Steve, I have a two-year-old mule. I would like to pull a buggy. I would like to order a collar and harness for this person, purpose. I am uncertain as to sizing. He is still growing. Also, the harness on your website is for a team. Can I purchase a single? This mule is halter trained. He seems to be a calm fellow. I have not trained equines before, so I'm looking for recommendations. Yeah, I've talked to Sam. We got a, a harness going with him. Um, yeah, we we're, we're not we don't have as many people wanting harness and this sort of thing. I don't know why Dave, our single harness, isn't on there. Uh, I guess I've overlooked it or something. I went over and looked and didn't find it. But I did tell Sam I do have a harness and I can fix him up. And I just need a few simple measurements so we can get him a collar and this sort of thing. Great. The next question comes from uh, Yushi. I think that's how you spell it. Yushi, if I mispronounced it, uh, let me know. But Yushi Williams says, good afternoon. And good afternoon to you, too. I have a standard donkey gelding, approximately five years old, that I just acquired. He is the sweetest thing, but I have a strong suspicion that he has not had much foundational training. I can groom him, and he does well for the farrier and is very gentle with my children, but would like to start halter training him so I can lead him to other sections of my small homestead to pasture graze while I do garden chores. It would be a real treat for him to accompany me around my property and get some time outside his one acre paddock. I just need to be able to easily direct him and get him to his paddock. I also want to get him used to loading and unloading uh, if I ever have to transport him. I have no intentions of riding or working him, but I need to ensure his groundwork is, stall and is solid. Do your products work well for donkeys as well as mules? Now, I'm going to say, uh, Yushi, you've got quite a few things that we want to talk to here, and I'm glad that you messaged in because you are in the perfect position. You're looking 
for answers. You're looking for help and you're looking to know more about your animal. And that's what we're going to deliver to you right now. So Steve, we've got Yushi wanting to halter train. Uh, it said he's halter trained, but hasn't had much ground foundation training. Wants him to go around his children. Um, wants him to keeps him in a one acre uh, grazing pasture or grazing pad acre paddock. Um, wants to be able to follow him around and graze while does chores. Do your products work good for donkeys? Let's hear what you have to say, Steve. Yes, uh, you know the bone structure of the donkey, uh, of course, is uh, is what's within that mule. And uh, yes, it works well. All of my training techniques, I would definitely be using my ground communication kit and being consistent. The problem with, with most folks uh, is they, they tend to have a halter on that's misadjusted and they're doing some basic things thinking he's halter trained. When he's not, he just kind of leads along because he's a, a gentle donkey. So that's what I would do first. I would do my ground communication. Now, as far as where you want to keep the animal, now, as far as where you want the animal to hang out, now, he's got a one-acre paddock, he says, and you actually advocate for something different. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, we, you know, you want to be able to think about the health of your animal. You are responsible to make sure he's healthy, and you can't do it out in a one-acre paddock, okay? You can't see the manure on a daily basis. You can't see the urination. You can't see how much water he's drinking, and you certainly don't know uh, uh, the, his feed content. Nor do you know uh, if, if we if we've got a pasture that's heavy in carbohydrates or some other thing as well. So I would suggest always in a small pen, twenty by twenty, um, and and uh, feed him accordingly. I can also tell you that when it comes to these donkeys, folks, they're really really easy to to grass founder. Uh, you can see across the top of their neck, the crest, the uh, top of the ribs, uh, on the dock of the tail. It's really easy. Uh, if you don't know what your feed is, uh, you need to get some samples of it and make sure. And also think about this. Your, your donkey has requirements, certain vitamins and minerals that he needs as well. It's not just a matter of filling his be belly. They, ha they need to have consistency and consistently uh, having vitamins and minerals that are good along with a good uh feed source good roughage get the teeth floated too uh, I, I that's really really important to get the uh, teeth floated and folks you should be doing floating the teeth every single year every year float the teeth get them wormed and get and keep them on a good program and it's really important to do that that way they'll be healthy got to remember they grind their feed they don't chew their feed. Always, always, always get a vet check. You cannot, I cannot stress that enough. Uh, get a vet check just because it looks good right there and you take him home. I've got some articles about this. Don't mean it's going to be the same as what you've seen road. I, I want you to touch them, smell them, write them. Don't just take somebody else's word for it. Some of these guys are very good writers. You go to some of these auctions and you see them being ridden and you'd swear them down. That's the, the most well-trained mule in the world. And, and it does have some merit to that. But folks, you need to sit on that mule. You need to turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, side pass. Uh, you do, okay? And, and you want to ask questions about this mule. What's his feeding program like? What's the ones of vet work been done? What type of uh, uh, dental work you had done? Things like that. Don't just take somebody's word for it, folks. Don't do that. I mean, sure enough, they could be honest to you to a point, but then you could have some problems. So, you know, it, it all comes down to this. Don't go for the dog and pony shows. Don't do that. You want to see if they're truly trained. Yes, it's pretty neat to take a stand on top of them and crack a whip. Wow, good for them. I've never seen that work really good on the side of a mountain, but it shows the rider's ability and it shows that the mule is fairly gentle. But going back to this, folks, you need to see real solid training. Steve, that's pretty much everything we've got for today. We recorded this because, uh, because I'm out of town. We recorded this a little bit quickly after our last show, and so we only had a few questions 
uh, that were up. So it's a little bit shorter of a show, but I made sure to include a few videos here or there so folks could check it out and enjoy the show. Folks, I do want to tell you that if you have not subscribed to the Mule Ranch podcast, you can hop over to Apple Mute, Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you just look for uh, Mule Ranch and you'll be able to see Steve's podcast there. You can get subscribed and that will get you all caught up on all of the episodes that we've had prior to this one. Uh, a couple of hundred episodes, matter of fact, I believe. Wow. Uh, so y'all go check that out. Um, we will be back next Wednesday with another program. It's going to be great. We've had a lot of fun. If you have any questions uh, about any of the things that we've talked about, you can send a message to support at muleranch.com. And as a matter of fact, you can put your questions in the comment section right now, and we will be sure to get to them for our next program. Steve, anything you yep. want to say before we're all done here today? No, we're, we're good, man. Uh, enjoy the family. Enjoy the summer there, Dave. Uh, going over to California. You're taking the whole brood this time? The whole brood. It's going to be good. Wow. I don't know what we're going to do. We may go to uh, Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, we may do an aquarium or a whale watching thing. We're trying to decide what activity we want to do. Of course, we'll be spending a little bit of time on the beach. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, there you go. Good for you. All right, my brother, then be blessed. We'll see you when we see you. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. You betcha. Bye-bye.